<laughs> Don't mess with a Heinemann. You can actually drive a Mustang up a Corvette hood and use it like a ramp. Who are the Mythbusters? Adam Savage. Oh, and it's away! And Jamie Heineman. It's very hard on a car if you do that. Between them, more than 30 years of special effects experience. Together with Brad Imahara. Oh, this is totally crazy. Carrie Byron. Time to wreck this car. And Tori Belichi. There's something you don't see every day. They don't just tell them it's. Holy they put them to the test. When it comes to testing Hollywood's excessive claims of motorized mayhem... That was so Hollywood! Who else you gonna call? Nutbusters. Well, there's your problem. So, take the edge of your seat, strap in, and hang on. Because the Mythbusters have three brand new automotive anomalies, commencing with some high-stakes car-to-car combat. All right, sir, I want to paint a scenario for you. Okay, picture in your mind's eye a winding mountain road, cliffs on both sides, deadly ravines below. I'm there. Now picture two cars driving on that road, side by side, each attempting to knock the other off out into the abyss. Go on. Now, Hollywood would have us believe that such a contest is an extended one, that it is in fact very difficult to knock someone off a road when they don't want to be. But we want to find out how difficult it actually is. Exactly. Time to get our neck braces. Neck braces and at the Alameda Naval Base, plenty of wide open crash-tastic space. Now the myth is that if you want to run someone off the road with your car while they're in a car, it's really difficult to do. Attention Mythbuster watchers. It's time to lay out our course. At least that is what generations of Hollywood movies have led us to believe, that it involves lots of crashing and resistance, and it is a non-trivial maneuver. But just how hard is it is the question we aim to answer today. An answer they'll find by hitting their one-mile red cone road and then each other until one of them goes over the edge of the imaginary abyss. Look, before we start this test, it makes sense to me that it might be very difficult to shove another car off the road, especially if you're in a car that's pretty close to the same mass. Let's gear up, people! For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, and us being evenly matched means that really getting the other off the road is about position and timing and speed. There's only one way to find out. Booyah. In a best of three, free for all. Here we go. Adam and Jamie are simply going to try and knock each other off the mile long fake mountain road. All right, Jamie, you ready? This is going to be fun. I'm ready. The hardest part is going to be not letting it escalate. Running each other off the road. Start again. This is like three. In close fighting. Two. It's going to be scrappy. One. Go! Despite the feisty prediction, the first few fender benders are more driving this daisy than a crazy all-in brawl. But after they suss each other out and go for it, Adam is immediately down and out. Guy threw me off. And with Adam over the edge, oh no, he's making it to the end. The Heidemann celebrates in style and ponders the physics of his victory. Pushing on these cars, it's actually kind of like sumo wrestling for cars, which is a fun idea now that I think about it. 
But anyway, just like with sumo wrestling, you're trying to use your mass to place it correctly to dominate your opponent. And even a few inches one way or another can dramatically affect the outcome. So the myth is in the balance. There was some Hollywood style pushing and shoving, but as soon as it got serious, Adam went down with a bad case of gravity. That was the hell of a bag he gave me. That was fun. <laughs> Let's do it again. OK, three, two, one, go. More data, round two. Ah, I'm going to run you off at the cliff, man. That was awesome! Woo! Well, it looks like things are heating up a little bit. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Both cars and even both drivers are well matched. And the fact that in a couple of runs, one of us has been able to push the other off the road quite nicely. <laughs> it's not looking so good for the myth. It's not. But at one win each, there's more than data at stake on the deciding test. Who will be crowned king of the Cone Road? There we go! I'm gonna throw you off the cliff road, Hoosier. You want a little bit? Yeah. Yeah! I'm gonna throw you off here. Whoa! Whoa. Oh! oh. That is hilarious. <laughs> well, just like in the movies, this is an actual cliffhanger. I'm hanging off the edge of the cliff, but I'm not dead. So we're going to go again from right here. Go! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I scared the out of you. Oh, no, I'm going to. Not for long. I think I died. So far, not so good for the myth. Almost every contact led to a quick cliff top drop. The exact opposite of film folklore. <laughs> yeah, baby. Don't mess with a Heinemann. But there are questions still to be answered. Does size really matter. All right, so you guys remember the movie Wanted? Right, that's the one where we got the curving bullet myth from. Exactly. We're going to test another scene where James McAvoy is speeding down the street in his Mustang. Now, he needs to shoot a guy, but unfortunately, all the windows are bulletproof. What does he do? Well, Angelina Jolie shows up in a Corvette. He's going to use her as a ramp. She puts on the brakes. He accelerates. There's a barrel roll over the limousine. I'm sorry. Shoots in through the sunroof. He lands on his wheels, drives away. She drives away. Everybody's safe. Except for the guy in the limo. All right, so clearly we're not going to drive the cars ourselves. So how do you propose that we emulate the actions of accelerating and braking? All right, how about we do this? We get a Corvette, we take it up to speed, and we slam on the brakes and measure how far the hood dips. Then we fix it at that height permanently. And we can do the same thing with the Mustang. We can hit the acceleration, measure how high the bumper goes, fix that, and then we can use our towing system to get them to crash. This is going to be fun. Well, you are mom. We're out here at the Alameda County Sheriff's Department, but before we start crashing cars, we've got to collect some data. Yeah! So the data we need is to find out what happens when these two vehicles meet head to head. So what we need to do is measure the distance from each of the bumpers to the ground at the moment of the car jump. Now, there we go. That looks great. So what we're going to do first is take the ramp vehicle. Good luck. Brake hard. Get it up to speed and then slam on the brakes. We measure how far it gets off the ground. 30, 40, brake! 
Nice. Cool. You guys want me to do it again for more data? <laughs> I think she's enjoying that a little too much. All right, so now she's hitting the brakes. Look at that. It's dropping. That's crazy. Uh, three inches, though. Yeah, three inches isn't much, but I mean, that's all we got to work with. Despite Carrie's dramatic deceleration, the Corvette's hood has hardly dropped, meaning its role as a ramp is seriously suspect. But it's onwards and upwards, literally. So up next is our muscle car. Now, this thing is going to have to raise up several inches in order to clear the Corvette. All right, we're set. OK, Carrie, go ahead. Once again, Carrie guns it. But this time, when she scales the scale, she hits not the brake, but the gas. That was it. That's the money shot. Dude, that was perfect. This is where the bumper starts. Now, this is when she's coming through, and then she accelerates. It's pretty amazing. Look at how high it's rising. I mean, that's easily three to four inches. Question is, after the guys fix the height difference by modifying both cars, will it be enough to get lift off? Now, we didn't quite get the acceleration and deceleration bumper heights that we thought we could get, but we're still going to do the head-on collision because although we didn't get the same separation you may have seen in the movie, I think this could still work. I think that maybe you just might get a little more damage on the ramp car than maybe you saw in the film. Meanwhile, back at Mission Control... Theoretically, I cut this support right here, the car will drop. The team gets busy fixing both cars at their point of impact heights. Carrie and Tori lighten the Mustang's front end by removing the engine. All right. Fixed. Raising it the requisite four inches. Okay. Meanwhile, Grant lowers the Corvette suspension by three inches. Perfect. Perfect on the first try. That never happens. And with that, let the crashing commence. So let's recap where we are. Let's gear up, people. Booyah. Hollywood has led us all to believe that if you're in a car and you want to run someone off the road, it can be quite a difficult contest. But frankly, so far, we haven't quite found that. I think I died. Don't mess with a Heinemann. But we're not done testing. Yep, up next, Jamie gets to play the heavyweight bad guy. <laughs> I got a new rig. In Hollywood, mismatched car duels drag on. But doesn't the difference in mass mean the little guy is on the fast track to oblivion? Adam's car weighs about 5,000 pounds. All right, start your engine. That SUV weighs 8,000 pounds. You do the math. Well, there's the math and theory. All right, here we go. And then there's the high velocity, and three. steel and bone crunching practice. Two. Adam and Jamie prefer the latter. Let's go! Ah, that front bumper of his looks terrifying. Let's see if I can give him a little wet for him. Oh. Wow, it's like hitting a rock! Oh. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> that was an adrenaline rush. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, this is fun. I'm giving it all I got. Come on. <laughs> Uh, he's barely budging. Come on! Come on! Ah! Is that all you got? It felt like... It felt like a lion playing with its food most of the time. Ah, I got more than that. Oh, that. oh! There's some little car that was kind of banging on the side of this thing. Ah! I played with him for a little while, and then I pushed him off the road. Oh. 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 
the second Jamie got serious, it was all over. It, uh, it was a piece of cake. As far as the hero of a Hollywood movie in a car like this holding their own against an SUV, this is not going to happen. But that isn't going to stop Adam. In three! We're going to run this test one more time. Go! But I have one more trick up my sleeve. It's a little something law enforcement officers like to call the pit maneuver. Let's go a little faster, shall we? When push comes to shove, the larger vehicle's going to win. Did you want something? But just like in martial arts, the right amount of pressure applied in just the right place can actually allow a smaller opponent to dominate a larger one. You want a little bit? Why don't they use the pit maneuver more in the movies? Well, they got to get their screen time somehow. Yep. The pit maneuver is the final nail in the coffin. By hanging back and nudging the rear, taking the target car out of action is simple. So final analysis, how hard is it to run someone off the road with your car? It's not. Not at all. Hollywood's been getting this totally wrong. Myth is busted, right? Yep. All right, let's get out of here. I'll see you back at the shop. All right. We are here at one of our favorite places, the Alameda Runway. Be careful. I don't want to mess up this pay job. To test the wanted myth that you can actually drive a Mustang up a Corvette's hood and use it like a ramp. <laughs> Sorry. When's Angelina Jolie showing up? Archie's doing a cameo on this episode. Really? Not that I heard. Now, both of our bumpers' heights are set. We have the bumper height of the Corvette as if it was going to break, and we have the bumper height of our Mustang as if it was accelerating. Now, it's time to set up our pulley system. Now, this pulley system is going to create the jump. Now, you've seen us tow cars hundreds of times up and down this runway. Almost there. What's unique about this particular tow system is that the cars are going to be traveling at two different speeds. 500 feet, right here. We have our ramp car, which is going to travel at half the speed of the jump car. Because remember, one was braking and the other was accelerating. One thing you're not going to see us do is make the jump car do a barrel roll like it does in the movie. We are just isolating this to one car using another car as a ramp which means for this myth to be confirmed, the Mustang has to catch some air and land without creating a head-on collision. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's good to see Carrie unwind. Now, how do you get two cars to meet up exactly in the same spot? Well, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to get a guide cable. The guide cable will be anchored with two trench plates running the length of the runway. Then, to get them to move, we're going to have each of the cars on a tow cable. Now, that tow cable will be hooked through some snatch blocks in the center of our guide cable. So that way, when we start towing the vehicles, they're actually going to meet up in the middle. This whole towing system is very similar to the one we use in Compact Compact. You remember how smoothly that one went. Is that going to go into oh, no, the no, water? No, 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 no. What we are doing this time is adding a guideline so hopefully the vehicles won't go off course. This ought to be great. It sounds so simple. Just spin my wheels. But in actual fact, it's a titanic task. It just works itself out somehow. With a thousand feet of cable and then a thousand feet more. Hundreds and hundreds of feet of cable. Just laying cable all day long. It's a build that puts the heavy in heavy duty. I was thinking about getting my nipple pierced. What do you think, a little big? Two days into the build. Almost there. And the guys are close. Yeah, teamwork. Now we need some truck. Actually, all we need now is Angelina Jolie. Three days in, and it's what we've all wanted. Yeah! Woo! Oh, oh, oh. 
a car crash rig that's ready to rock and roll. All right, so we've got 2,400 pounds of pure American muscle car careening down the runway as fast as it can go straight at a sloped shaped sports car that's 3,300 pounds. We're talking about a million joules of energy right there. What do I think is going to happen? I've seen a car hit a K-rail and launch. So a ramp shaped car, we could get a perfect launch straight up into the air, right into the San Francisco Bay. At least that's what I'm hoping to see. I think we're going to see a head-on collision, therefore destroying two classic cars in one take. Now, I know there's a lot of car enthusiasts out there who are going to look at that and go, Mythbusters, you've wrecked two cars. But I have a feeling after you see how cool this high speed is, you're not going to feel that way. So which will it be, a holy jolly leap of faith or a head-on humdinger? All right, this is using a car as a ramp. This is the point of no return. Hit it! Mustang right. is going, Corvette, Corvette is going. going. Who wants to make a bet that a car is going through a fence today? <laughs> if a car comes towards you, run. Looking good. Mustang Looking is accelerating. Faster. Here we go. OK. Looking good. Looking Pretty good. good. Corvette's correcting. Okay, oh, look out, no. look out, look out. Oh, no. Damn it. Oh, no. we should have taken that bet. Oh, God, no. No. Oh, son of a Don't go in the water, don't go in the water. Don't go in the water. OK. Well, good news is I think we can still use these cars. Oh, that's the good news? Yeah. <laughs> Everything was working perfectly. The tow system was working. But the Corvette decided to go far right. It broke its guide cable. The Mustang hit its mark, but it kept going. And as you can see, it went through a fence. I have no idea why this went wrong. It's Mythbusters. We got to reset and try it again. Yep, far from the pinpoint crash they were after, the two cars missed by over 50 feet. All right, I'm pretty sure this is where the car went through. I'm not surprised that fence is like a magnet. But with both vehicles comparatively undamaged, this ought to buff right out. The guys tow them back to the start line. Another day, another fence. Rejig the rig. Make the guide cable more able. And before you know it, full car service here at Mythbuster. They're good for take two. All right, we've got our jump car ready. We've got our ramp car ready. Let's tow this beast in three, two, one, go! Rolling. Both cars rolling. Rolling. Come on, baby. Okay. Go, go, go faster, go faster, go faster. OK. Uh, everything looks good on yeah. target oh, so God. far. Oh, God, faster. Oh, God, is this I happening? Wait, is this actually going to happen? That was a crash. <laughs> and it didn't jump up in the air. It's busted. It's totally busted. busted. <laughs> Ouch. Although the Mustang did gain some lift, the mods to the car's hood heights were clearly not enough to mirror the movie. But it's not all bad news. I never thought I would say this after seeing a head-on collision, but that was beautiful, especially because it took us several test runs before we were able to get the system to work. But it worked beautifully. We hit the cars exactly like in the movie. Now, the car did jump a bit, but both cars were totaled, and they weren't able to roll away like in the movie. So this one is busted. But I think the most important piece of data we were able to take from this experiment is this. Angelina Jolie would have survived. I think we can all sleep well tonight. Oh, wow.
While our first story involved something that Hollywood makes look difficult, but which is in fact easy, our second story might be the other way around. Genuinely excited about today. Try not to roll the car. Go on. Picture our hero being chased by the bad guys and cornered with no line of escape except an alleyway that is too narrow to fit the hero's car. I'm okay. He gets out by finding a conveniently placed curb or plank that allows him to get up onto two wheels, drive down the narrow alleyway to escape, and the bad guys can't follow. That actually sounds like it might be pretty difficult. That's what I was thinking. So, roll cage, runway, action. So, can a novice driver get up on two wheels and, crucially, maintain balance as easily as Hollywood would have us believe? Or is it a disaster waiting to happen? Look deep into my eyes. What does this pendulum have to do with today's story? Actually, everything. Watch this. Now it's an upside-down pendulum, or, as an engineer would refer to it, a reverse pendulum. Which is exactly what our car will be if we successfully get it up on two wheels. That is, a center of gravity that's high and a pivot point that's low. There are entire circus arts devoted to finding the balance point in a reverse pendulum arrangement, and I have studied a few. Look, Ma, one hand! That's why I think I'm going to do really well at today's test. Whoa. I'm OK! The most important component of this myth is the car. And so we've got a normal car with normal tires and a normal suspension. Of course, we've added a safety harness, though. The other important part of this story is how to get the car up on two wheels, and we're going to do that with this, a ramp made out of aircraft-grade aluminum. And it's solid as a rock. Hopefully, if everything goes right, we should be hitting it at about 20 miles an hour. OK. Now, because there's a genuine risk that we might tip this car completely over, we've added a roll bar. I personally think it would be great to roll it, but they tell me that's bad. That looks beautiful. In Tinseltown, any old curb or plank will enable two-wheel gymnastics. Absolutely perfect. But Adam and Jamie have given the myth its best possible shot, with a long, gently sloping ramp high enough to tip the car over its center of gravity. I've never done this before, but I do know it's going to be scary as heck, because I'm not used to it, and it's going to feel like the car is going to tip completely over. And with one more look from the top of the ramp, this is terrifying. First timer Jamie is about to flirt with a serious car accident. Come on in. His aim is to literally teeter on the edge of disaster. <laughs> awesome. Well, I tell you what, that right there is something you don't want to think too much about because if you think about it, you ain't going to do it. <laughs> Fear factor aside, the result is pretty clear. Yeah! Jamie may be excited, but he's nowhere near replicating the first time ease and control of the novice movie maneuver. It's not until his final attempt that he even gets it up in a wild careening curve. I should reiterate that this myth is that it's easy to get a car up on two wheels and drive it around. That was cool! <laughs> now, granted, I did get the car up for a little bit, but getting complete control and driving it wherever you want is a whole different kettle of fish. Can I try? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> and I know if I keep pushing it the way that I have been, I'm going to roll the car. I just know it. Well, here goes nothing. So, you're halfway off. Can Adam tip this myth in the right direction? Straight up, seriously spooky, spooky crap. Or onto its roof. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Adam rolled up the ramp straight off it, and gravity did its thing. Whoa! <laughs> uh, Crazy intense. What do you think? <laughs> that, that is much more difficult than I thought it would be. It's kind of a rush the first time, isn't it? Whoa. The first time you hit the ramp is completely intense. Oh. Woo. Woo. It's 
very disconcerting. Going again! So disconcerting that I like turned the wheel like this and plammed into the ground. <laughs> I know plammed isn't actually a word, but you know what I mean. I plammed into the ground, kind of bumped my head. Well, don't do that. Oh, no, this is as you thought it would be, is it, Savage? No, it isn't. While they make it look easy in the movies, clearly it's going to take more than a few hours to get this down. Frankly, I think we need a little help. Cue stunt driving legend James Smith. Because to find out if a near novice could master this movie move, Adam and Jamie need a few top two-wheel tips. Oh, wow. Oh. Well, that didn't work at all. That was more of a crash than it was a jump. Yeah, but the Mustang started to ride up the Corvette like it was a ramp. I really thought it was gonna work for just like this long. <laughs> all right, well then why don't we give this myth some advantages? What if we lower the ramp car even more and we take the jump car and increase the height of its bumper? Maybe we can get a jump then. Yeah, you know what? It's worth a shot. This is gonna be the best car crashing episode ever. Or jumping. Yeah, or jumping. We're back at the Alameda runway to test our wanted car jump myth. Now, back at the shop, we took a Corvette and we cut out the suspension and we put super skinny tires on it to get it as low as possible. All right, now that's what I call low. We've got the same tow rig, the same guide system. We're gonna set up the same as before and hopefully this time we'll actually get a jump. Not only are we going to make the Corvette more ramp-like, but we're also going to help along the Mustang. We made it a lot lighter. It does not even have the weight of the engine in it anymore. So the front end is way jacked up. I have a feeling when these two meet, we might see some movie results. We might actually see this car jump that car. All right, this is test two, enhanced vehicles to see if we can replicate the results. Everyone ready? Oh, yeah. In three, two, one, hit it. Corvette's moving. Mustang's moving. Looking good so far. Everything looks like it's online. Uh, how's Everything... the Corvette doing? Oh, gosh. No, it's good. It's, it's OK. Good. It's okay. Correcting. Looking good. good. It's good. <laughs> Look at how fast the, the Mustang's Mustang going. The Mustang is looking great. Oh. Oh. Even with the altered vehicles, we didn't see a flying car. We saw more of a head-on collision. We can do better. That's a head-on collision that's worth seeing again, and again, and again. This test could not have gone any better. I mean, it was pretty much a perfect test. We got the vehicles going at the speeds from the movie. They crashed exactly like the movie. We even got the Mustang to do a barrel roll. However, it's still busted. But man, that was awesome. I think the problem is, this is like driving up a ramp but hitting the curb first, because you still have to get over that sort of initial bump in front of the Corvette. It's not quite ramp-like just yet. I have a feeling we can remedy that. Yep, you might say, it's time to ramp it up. After both tests, we're having the same problem. We're getting more of a crash and less of a jump like in the movie. And the reason why is because when the two vehicles meet, their bumpers meet before the wheel of the jump vehicle has a chance to get up onto the hood of the ramp vehicle. So we're getting more of a crash, less of a jump. Now the way we're gonna fix that is with this. We're gonna build a ramp, and the ramp is gonna actually attach to the ramp vehicle, and it will move towards the jump vehicle. This way, the jump vehicle will have a chance to transition its wheels up onto the hood, and we'll see if we'll get the car to jump, like in the movie. 
And with a third and final Corvette. It's too bad we got to wreck this one, too. It's time to ramp up the up ramp. What I'm doing right now is laying down steel sheet. It's eighth inch thick. I'm going to weld that to the frame of the Corvette. Want to know how to car enthusiasts? Oops. This is going to help take up the weight of the other car. I'm also reinforcing the entire ramp with two inch square steel tube. And that's going to make sure that our ramp doesn't just collapse once the other car hits it. That seems sturdy enough. Yeah, I think it should work. It only has to work for a second. <laughs> if that happens, all we're going to get is a head on collision. All right, let's see if this ramp works. Yeah. Now we need is a really big car. So we're back at the runway at Alameda to try and see if we can turn a Corvette into a ramp. You guys ready to see a car fly? This is going to be awesome. So we've got the exact same setup as before with the two cars being towed at each other. The only difference this time is that the ramp car can't go as fast as it did before. There we go. The reason is that it's got a ramp attached to it that's scraping the ground. All right, let's see if this works. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute, the kinetic energy is all wrong. But for the purposes of this myth, all we're interested in is the profile of the ramp and making sure that that car can get some air. And if things work out right, the difference in kinetic energy won't make a difference at all. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to see a car use another car as a ramp. Well, I think we've done everything we possibly could to make this happen. I got a really good feeling about this. At this point, we're taking this myth to the extremely ridiculous. And even adding a ramp to the front of the Corvette. OK, take it away when you're ready. I still don't think we're going to get the same outcome as the movie. I, I just think that the Corvette doesn't have the structural integrity to take the weight of the Mustang. Ramp is moving. The Mustang is moving. Kind of the Mustang course. looks like it's coming straight for us. We might get a ride up, but I think we're going to give the driver of the Corvette an extreme headache. Hmm, is that is that an optical illusion? No. Let's see if it strains out. No! Stop, stop. Ramp's over there. Mustang's in the weeds. This is clearly a reset. But after this much practice, that's it. We're ready. That barely takes no time at all. All right. Hopefully this time it goes straight. And with the rig rejigged, take it away. The team gives this movie myth one last chance. The car's moving. Okay. okay. Mustang's moving. It's Looks really straight now. Yeah, it's going better. Bring up speed. Here we go. Go faster. Go faster. Go faster. Oh, here we go. It's happening. It's happening. All right, it didn't land and drive off undamaged, but it soared. It's great. I mean, it's still busted, but that was amazing. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Holy moly, that was cool. We did it. We finally got the car to soar. Yeah, we might have cheated quite a bit by adding the ramp, but you can see where the wheel went up the ramp. Now there's no more head-on collision. Gouge into the hood. The wheel went over the windshield. The car flew. It did a barrel roll, just like in the movie. However, what you didn't see in the movie is the damaged ramp car, and the jump car is upside down, completely totaled. This one's still busted, but man. That was awesome. While the ramp did let the Mustang bridge the gap onto the Corvette's hood, neither car escaped unscathed. Meaning even with the ramp up, this myth is going down. So we tried this several times, starting off with the way that they supposedly did it in the movie and ending up with this. Now the difference between a head-on collision and actually getting a car to jump is the ramp. 
Now, of course, this car didn't land on its wheels and drive away like in the movie, but you know what? We got it to fly. May I present a car using another car as a ramp? Look, she's still rolling. We got a ride home. Awesome, finally. I think this is the first. OK, five bucks says we're going to crash through the gate. <laughs> So far, Adam and Jamie have failed to pull off a supposedly simple two-wheeled movie maneuver. This is terrifying. But to give the myth a chance, they've called in the cavalry. A word about our stunt driver today, James Smith. He has been doing this for 10 years. Oh, wow. Does it for television, movies, even live shows. So is it a little steeper than you expected? And you might know his work from the Transformer films, where he's driven for the Bumblebee. We're near at the balance point, but this gives you an idea of where you can actually take a car. Yeah. If anyone can teach Jamie and I how to get up on two wheels, it's him. Oh, it seems like you're about ready to go over. I guess you are. Pretty close. Now I'll just speed up and I'll drop it down like that. <laughs> that's just, that's just wrong. That's, that's nuts. <laughs> Getting it up there, it seems sort of like a tightrope. Oh, whoa, holy crap, wow. It feels like we're completely out of control. He's taking the wheel and he's just kind of feathering it back and forth and uh, it, it just seems like you're about ready to roll right over. I cannot believe this is possible. It's crazy. Wow. This is completely intense. I can reach out and touch the ground from here. To turn around to the right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then with this wind, I got I to gotta lean it even harder with the wind. Oh, my god. You're going to scrape the mirror. That's insane. Oh. <laughs> that was awesome. It's really disconcerting. It genuinely feels like, it feels like someone takes you through an accident to the moment just before everything goes fully pear-shaped and then pauses, because the car is vertical. <laughs> Any other circumstance, that would be the worst thing that ever happened to you in the car that you were in. Oh, this is great. You're nailing it. This is unbelievable that you can actually drive like this. We got the perfect expert for this story. That's the show. So you ready to do this? No. All right, well, let's do it anyway. <laughs> now to tell if this silver screen stunt is even remotely possible for a pair of non-professionals. I prefer just to like do a circle and just kind of roll in at 20 miles an hour. Just then it gives you a like, kind of chance to breathe. Okay. This is literally where the rubber leaves the road. With some basic instruction under his belt to match the movies, Jamie has to nail this first time out. There you go. Uh, hit my head. Hard? Uh, yeah. But all Jamie nailed was his head. I got your hat, Jamie. On the verge of rolling, Jamie yanked back from the edge of disaster too fast and landed violently. <laughs> it's very telling if I do something that throws my hat off. <laughs> His beret bailed because Jamie incurred a serious whiplash injury. In pain and in danger of causing lasting damage, he takes the safe option. I think I should probably stand down, you know, repeating injuries and all that. OK. As much as it irks me. <laughs> I just want to point out here that for Jamie to actually pull out of this experiment because of an injury is pretty significant and relatively unprecedented. Buckle up. This is not a simple task and not to be tackled lightly. And if further proof was needed. Here we go that this is not an achievable amateur maneuver. Go a little faster than okay. the rear wheel won't bump the ramp. Adam spends the next four hours. Keep doing that and just roll yeah. a little bit more. Failing to get it up. 
What makes this stunt so difficult is that while you can work your way up incrementally to find the tipping point, that's it. Once you get there, well, it's a tipping point. Oh, <laughs> you, you felt the danger and you I reacted. Did. That's awesome. And if you go too far, you roll the car. Yeah! Woo! If you don't go far enough, you come slamming back down and you get a neck ache like I've got. So the only way you get past this is by doing it over and over until your reflexes become automatic as to what you should do when you're at that tipping point. Yep, keep into it. There you go, there you go, there you go. There you go, get a little throttle. Whoa, ho -ho! Woo! yeah, that's awesome. At last, Adam appears to have the hang of hanging around on two wheels. And being the obsessive perfectionist that he is, he has to have just one more try. Upside down, but we're okay. Oh, okay. So I figured out what the uh, outer limit was. <laughs> Don't release your belt until you're ready because you'll fall. Yeah. All right, we're coming out. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's like giving birth. Ah. Hi. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> I'm still a little bit high on the adrenaline rush of the feeling like it's going OK, it's going OK. OK, it's not going OK. OK, it's really not going OK. And I got a little bit of a cut, but I'm fine. That was awesome. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So, we gotta call it. Driving on two wheels is easy, according to the movies. Where do we stand? Not. Nah, this one's totally busted. It's hard. It's also fun, but you know, it's dangerous. And to get to where you're any good and reliable at it, it's one whole heck of a lot of work. Yeah, only in the hands of experts. Well, looks like we're walking. I guess so. He's amazing. Straight as an arrow. Yeah.